Welcome to Dorking Out. My name is Sonia Mansfield, and as far back as I can remember, I always wanted to be a gangster. Joining me is my podcasting sister from another mister and the co-host of Dorking Out, Margot D. Hello, my friend. Sonia, you are really, really funny. What? Funny how? <laughs> I, I I just think you're funny. <laughs> All right, that's you... it! <laughs> We are dorking out about 1990s Goodfellas. We've been thinking about Ray Liotta, of course, who hmm. passed away. Was that last last week? Um, last week. Like 67 years old, died in his sleep. So yeah, that's young. Yeah. And he's one of those people who's always good, always good in everything he does. So hence Goodfellas. It is, he's a mighty good fella. He's a mighty, mighty good fella. <laughs> It's ba- this movie is based on the nonfiction book Wise Guy by Nicholas Pileggi. Pileggi, thank you. <laughs> and Martin Scorsese co-wrote the script, and he also directed it. Did you read the book, Margot? Did you do yeah, this for book versus movie? We did. Yeah, that's uh, my other podcast. It's on our Patreon wall. Yeah. Okay. But I I figured yeah, you had. I love this. Yeah. Because this movie's your jam. It is. Like, they made a movie just for Margot. It stars <laughs> Robert De Niro, Ray Liotta, as we mentioned, Joe Pesci, Lorraine Bracco, Paul Sorvino, and 27 other actors who were in The Sopranos. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're like, this feels like I've seen some of this before. You've seen all so many of these people in The Sopranos if you watch The Sopranos. And if you haven't watched The Sopranos, you should go watch The Sopranos because it's really, really good. Up. Yes, it does. Did you see Goodfellas in the theater? Yes, I did. And I was on a date and we had a great time. It's great date movie because there's shit to talk about <laughs> afterwards. That's true. It's a it's a conversation starter. Really? It really is. And yeah, I remember the first time I didn't know about that bit. That's what's like what's fun about going to a movie theater back then. Yes. Is you know, people before people had phones, it's that, you know, people just sit there and watch the movie. It's astonishing. But <laughs> when he does that whole thing, he goes, What do you mean? What do you mean I'm funny? Yeah. It's like you could hear a pin drop in the because th- everyone's like, What the fuck is going on right, right. now? Right. And then he's like, Ah, I'm just kidding. You. Yeah, I almost had you. And everybody in the was like, Whew. Okay. <laughs> but there's times like when Ray Liotta beats up the boyfriend. I mean, yeah. there's lots going on. It's it's a violent movie. Yes. There's a lot. If you don't like cursing. Like not say, for you. Not salty language. Yes. Uh, yeah. You're going to be pumped out. But I find it thrilling. It's it's so exciting. It's Is it excessive? Sure. Yeah. But it's memorable. I don't care if it uses Gimme Shelter again. <laughs> it's a great song. <laughs> It should be in every movie. Yeah. I don't care. Yeah. At least it's a good song that's in every movie. Right. Yeah. It's not, it's not the Macarena or something that's appearing in every movie. Or Unskinny Bop, which we'll talk about later by Poison. (laughs) (laughs) Can you imagine? (laughs) Not a good Poison song. I like Poison fine. Unskinny Bop, Bop, Bop in every single Martin (laughs) Scorsese movie. (laughs) I think that'd be like the meat, the meat on the coat, the people on the coat thing yes. like they're on the meat rack that's what i'm trying to say uh skinny bop <laughs> bop, bop, bop. bop. Yeah, that would totally work <laughs> you should re-edit this movie margo oh uh, you know what i'm gonna put that on i'm gonna put it on my uh i'm gonna tick tock that shit yes. there you go do Writing it that down yep this movie uh, obviously it's like it's considered one of the greatest gangster movies ever made and for obvious reasons because it's it's super fucking good now margo has seen this movie many many times surprisingly this is like my third time watching it i saw it in the theater i really really liked it in the theater obviously because i'm not a monster probably saw it one more time like rented it when it came out really liked it and then over the years have started watching it because i know i like it and then i realize i'm not in the mood for this kind of violence and then i stop it and watch something else because it's 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 intense it's intense and it's the movie it's two and a half hours long, I think. And it fucking moves. The whole movie feels like a movie trailer right. to me, actually. Like, it just, like, the music and the cutting, or when they don't cut, even, there's, like, that amazing long tracking shot yep. through the Coca Cabana. Like, the whole movie feels like a movie trailer to me. And it's, 
it's intense to watch. And I feel like it's not the kind of movie that you just walk in on halfway through and what, like you need to watch it from beginning to end. At least that's how I feel about it, which is maybe why I haven't watched it as much as other Scorsese movies. I watch this to fall asleep sometimes. Oh my gosh. That's how well, that's how well this and the Godfather I could watch and I could wake up a little bit and then turn off my Kindle, but I know exactly where it is. And I'm like, also not to brag, but I'm writing a book about <laughs> film. You can brag. You can brag. And there's a lot of stuff that's filmed in Brooklyn that's from this movie. So I, of course, I've rewatched a bunch of films. And so I have another, I have another way of looking at it now. It's, it is long. I mean, for me, I do have my favorite bits and I can. Sure. But yeah, it is violent. And there's, and sometimes it's, it's intense. There's the drug scenes are really intense. That whole thing mm-hmm. at the end. Yeah. But Ray Liotta really holds it together. Oh my God. He's so fucking, so fucking good. great. He's so good I in this miss movie him already. And I, I'm one of those people, I'm not totally into narration. I think yeah. it's a little lazy. Sometimes it's like, we don't know how to say what's going on. So we're yeah. just going to have somebody tell you. It totally works for this movie. I think it does he, too. As a character, because he's very quiet in his scenes usually. He's not the most boisterous one. He's not the one that talks the most. And so it's good to have him, like, when he feels comfortable, like, oh, this is the shit that's really happening. Yes. Because he's holding it together. But it's the clothes, the music. It's it, – I'm sure every person that wants to be a director has seen this movie. Yeah. Because every shot, you're like, how do I do that? And just so much of what is in this movie – you see it in so many other movies that come after it. Like this was the first, Mm -hmm. like so much of what we know about like gangsters and the mob and all the stuff, like what we know with the Sopranos now, before all of that, there was Goodfellas and yeah, it's it's just so fucking good. And I, I do want to mention like that narration, just first of all, Ray Liotta, like his narration is so fucking good. It doesn't Mm -hmm. sound like, It sounds like he's really telling you a story and having a conversation with you. It doesn't sound like some other voiceovers where it just feels like, I don't know, like he's reading something to you. I don't know if I'm explaining it well, but it it feels like he's having a conversation with you. And also just the sound of his voice. He has a really good voice. He had a great voice. He was a good looking man with a great voice and Mm -hmm. very talented and supposedly was very sweet. Very. I know. I know. Hmm. All right, P. I know. As I sip my rosé. <laughs> See you, Ray Liotta. <laughs> Did you probably never watched it, but there was so there was a cartoon that was on for a while called Animaniacs. I think they've relaunched it since it last in the last year. I remember year or so. Animaniacs. Yeah. So they had one called they had all kinds of different little cartoon segments and one was called Good Feathers. Do you remember Good Feathers? No. <laughs> okay. Oh my God, that sounds amazing. Okay, so it was these three pigeons and the three pigeon, one was like the Ray Liotta character and he was always smiling. And then the other one was like the Robert De Niro character. And then there was a Joe Pesci character and that's the one that would always lose his temper every single episode. So it that's was like, amazing. and then he would yell like, that's it. And then he'd start fighting <laughs> with people. <laughs> But and it's so funny because I was like, is this supposed to be for kids? Because kids aren't watching Goodfellas. That no, I... they, <laughs> but they, they were doing that thing on two levels. There was something for the adults. It's yes. like The Simpsons. Like, yeah. there's something with the, the adults, the grown ups get, and there's something the kids laugh at. Yes. I'm trying to think of the Francis Ford Coppola movie, Apocalypse Now. Yes. They did a version of Apocalypse Now on that. <laughs> I, that was the funniest fucking thing I ever seen seen in my life it's hard to get i think they they scrub the internet of it um or youtube of it but if you can find it yeah it was a great show old old animaniacs episodes old, had pinky yeah. pinky in the brain and yep uh, it's very very funny stuff and i think there were things there for kids but i think it was definitely geared to the 20 somethings and up at the time yeah so but we're not here to talk about it. Animaniacs, <laughs> no. People are going to be like, what the fuck? Yeah. So shall we start at the beginning? Shall we yes. Shall we run through it? Yes. All right. Do you want to you wanna lead us or you want me? I want you. Hmm. I'll do my best. <laughs> I haven't seen as much as you. So 
the whole th- so it does open with the you know as far back as i can remember i've wanted to be a gangster uh. and he get he is like across the street basically from the mob and he sees like all the perks they get and all the privilege that comes with being a gangster and he gets a job working for them just he's just a kid and he's mm-hmm. working for them and he's what parking cars even though he's not tall enough to even see over the steering wheel <laughs> you know he's running errands you know and he's making himself useful indis- useful and indispensable like running yeah. around with the the main boss which is Polly uh played by Paul Sorvino he's so good in this everyone is so good i know i'm going to yeah. say he's so good in this he's so good in this yeah but, yeah running around with him because his whole thing is he doesn't he doesn't even have a phone in his house, so he's like running from payphone to payphone, and this kid is just helping him out. And as they're, oh my god! And there's the terrible scene where like his dad, um, Ray Liotta's dad. Sorry, he's just a kid in the movie played by someone else. But shit. Anyway, when <laughs> what Henry if they had Ray Liotta, play? <laughs> <laughs> by the way, they all do play like ages from like twenty to like fifty or something right. like that and so, they don't have the de-aging makeup or whatever yeah. they have nowadays it's pretty yeah. much like hair and makeup and tape yeah you know, so holding them together sometimes yeah there is a little bit of like wait is he supposed to be 18 and he's yeah, like yeah. clearly a grown-ass man so yeah. some, but there is a point where there's a, a part at the beginning where like the Joe Pesci character and the Ray Liotta character are actually being played by younger kids. I just can't remember the actor's name, so I'm so sorry. Uh, Henry Hill's father, like, finds out that he's been ditching school and just beats his ass with a belt. It's so awful. And he yeah. says, like, the beatings were worth it because I wanted to work with these gangsters and I don't care. Then the gangsters beat up the mailman to like make for sure home the report card. for bringing home a report card i'm all poor mailman he's just trying <laughs> he to... was terrified yeah yeah he's just trying to do his job you know it's like rain sleet and snow can't stop you but the mob can so he d- he stops delivering mail to their house completely it's and then they kind of cut to him being a little older he's working with robert de niro uh who's playing jimmy and then joe pesci is tommy and tommy is quite the hothead i guess would be the yes. uh, is the uh understatement of the year he gets pissed off over everything and it's you'd wonder if it's like little man syndrome yes or or what it is because but the guy they're playing they're they're all bigger beefier guys yeah. when you look it up because it's real history from the 60s and 70s and it was a real beefy guy so i think he just has his attitude i just i miss joe pesci in movies i mean even the super which is a terrible movie that i watched a few <laughs> weeks ago i'm like i miss pesci he was he was great oh my God. I, I watched I think the irishman was his last yeah i watched home alone um Ugh. over the holiday break with my son and my son became obsessed with home alone one and two and even in a movie like Home Alone that is very, very silly, Joe Pesci is really fucking funny in those movies. <laughs> he's he's really... intense and yeah. he's present. Yes. And he's he's completely I just I just can't say I think he was a hairdresser. He goes all in. Yeah. Joe Pesci. We should yeah. do my cousin Vinny sometime. We that definitely needs to be on the list. Yeah. It might be already on the list, but we should definitely do it soon. I haven't seen that one in years either, and it's but every time I see a clip, I'm like, so fucking good. Yeah. <laughs> so what do you good. mean? A, what is a ute? <laughs> <laughs> He's great. Robert De Niro is beautiful mm-hmm. and looks great. He does. He he leads the kids. And Henry does get, they, what do they say? It's not picked, but he he's pinched yes. by the cops. Mm-hmm. And he doesn't blab. And they all make a big thing. <laughs> I love the, of like breaking him out of jail. Like you, you didn't squeal and you didn't mm-hmm. rat on your friends, you know? So he's it. Now, the thing is, is that him and Jimmy have Irish blood. Yes. And at the time, uh, they loosened up their rules in 2000 and openly said, you could join us now if your dad's Italian. I love, that the, Italian. <laughs> I love that the mob had these regulations that were well known enough that they then publicized the update in 2000 like it's... hey good news Ital- good news irish you can also be made men now yay 
<laughs> it's but it's like you have to have an Italian sounding name. That's the whole thing. And oh so, my gosh. Yeah, it's still like there's a requirement that most people can't hit. I mean, it's not but anyway, but it's a real they're based on real people, but yes. they're obviously it's Martin Scorsese's version and he loves violence. He loves gore. Oh, yes he does. We did The Departed earlier yes. this year and that movie too. Pretty violent and yeah, real gruesome. And Gangs of New York. Yep. Yeah, this, he's not afraid thing. of it. It's his thing. I think we're more so we're used to it now. At the time, this movie scandalized people. I mean, it because the critics were like, "Ooh, they're all cursing, and it's coarse, and they're very rough, and it's really long." And why mm-hmm. are they playing "Give Me Shelter" again? And <laughs> it's good performances, but it's no "Driving Miss Daisy" or whatever it was that year that they were had a boner for. It was dan- um, it was "Dances with Wolves," which is something we have to talk about yeah. one day. Yeah. Uh, which is a good movie it's it's but it's that's much more you know it white people can watch it and feel very good about themselves yeah we're not all bad some of us are kevin costner (laughs) we didn't all commit i i i will fully admit like all right there there is this thing where people have like if you it came down to for best picture it was like goodfellas it dances we're going to talk a little bit more about this at the mm-hmm. around the end of the show but like it was goodfellas and dances with wolves and dances with wolves won and it was like then you know and now it became this like a punching bag right like fuck dances right. with wolves i'm team goodfellas blah 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 and we would see this later with like pulp fiction and forrest gump yep. where it's like you kind of had to pick a side or you could be like oh or i just really love movies and i like these right. movies i like them both i don't feel the need to pick sides And I think there was definitely that with Goodfellas and Dances with Wolves as well. And these are very different movies. (laughs) Different movies, different themes, different things they're going for. Yeah. I mean, they're both in. I mean, that was a movie. I think they had an intermission for it because that was like three hours. It was like three and a half hours long. That one played at my theater. It was. Yeah. It was super. That's. That's why I haven't seen Goodfellas a million times. Goodfellas didn't play at my theater. Aha. If it didn't play at Sonia's theater, she had other things to do. I had but, I that meant I had to pay for it, which meant I probably didn't see it as much as I saw Dances with Wolves because I, I could for, see it for free. It was on TV quite a bit. It was one of those in the '90s on TNT. It was uh, it was repeat. You know, it was played on TV, yeah. but there's a TV version. <laughs> Which is already jarring enough. And if you're kind of used to that in your brain and then you see the real version, you're like, oh, like I imagine Saturday Night Fever. It's the, sort of like, oh, bully, this is not. Is the TV dancing. version like 45 minutes long? <laughs> uh, it's it's you frigging yeah. moron. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's exactly. You, you, oh, fudge you. <laughs> you <know? laughs> it's so stupid. I'm going to beat the snot. Out, out of you, you. <laughs> total voice change. I'm going to yeah. beat the snot out of you. <laughs> it's it is. It's a little silly, but it still has the music, which is great. I mean, yes. you get you get the gist of it. Yeah. We fast fast forward and <laughs> Henry. You get the gist of it, just the way Martin Scorsese intended. <laughs> you get the gist of it. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, that's okay. He's so Henry grows up and he's in his early twenties, and that's when we meet Ray Liotta, who was what thirty or forty when he did this. He's, I don't know. I think he's in his thirties. Yeah, and it took like a year to get the part. It was a big because he. What was the movie he did before? It was The Passion of Christ. That's oh what I don't yes, watch over and over again. You, no, you don't watch the Last Temptation of Christ. Last Temptation. Sorry. By the yeah, way, there's the Mel Gibson one, and then there's the so. Yeah, so like t- a year, maybe two years before this, the last t- Martin Scorsese does The Last Temptation of Christ, which, by the way, it's a really good movie. It's just a fucking bummer. <laughs> like, yes. But like the ending but, isn't great. Yeah, spoilers. <laughs> spoilers <laughs> for The Last Temptation of Christ on the New Testament. <laughs> it doesn't <laughs> doesn't end well for him. But it like. Uh, all these all these Catholic organizations and churches, they all freaked out and they were like protesting the movie. And I was like, they hadn't even seen it. And it was they just did that all the time, by the yeah. way. The Catholic Church loves to protest things. They don't yeah. see or hear. Yeah, they're they love it. 
they love to boycott music and concerts that they would never go to and it's whatever but yeah that was so poor martin scorsese like literally he had bodyguards for a while because like people were threatening his life this is the pro-life party by the way (laughs) like threatening his life you know because he made a movie they didn't like it's so ridiculous but yeah it took forever to get for him to get work on this one because of the outcry over that one right Right. And when you meet or, you know, whoever at Martin Scorsese's he's interviewed, he's not like Oliver Stone or Quentin Tarantino. Right. He doesn't have this like gigantic personality. He's not smug. He's mm-hmm. not, you know, I'm the smartest person here. I'm the most interesting. He seems like somebody who really observes people yeah. and observes details. Mm-hmm. And that's what he's into. And he t- likes to tell stories. That's yes. his thing. Like, it's very funny when you're like, this is a man who like really has a lot of violent films and he looks like he would be almost like a afternoon tea person. <laughs> I, I, I'm i sure he was a cokehead in the 70s. Who wasn't? They all but, were. <laughs> me too. In elementary school. It was, right? It was rough. But but I, I think he had his moments. I mean, But he loves music and he loves film. He loves art. And mm-hmm. he's really interested in people and he's interested in people who are messy, as we would say mm-hmm. now. And he's really good at that. And so Henry is growing up. He never really is like the big shot. Right. In the, but Henry Hill, he had to go into our witness protection. And then he was such a blabbermouth that he just started calling Howard Stern and just <sighs> calling it to the show. So they eventually like, all right, we're not going to pay you to be a witness protection yeah. if you're going to call like this nationally this show, like 20 syndicated. million people. <laughs> right. Such a dumb, dumb. He, he was just, a dumb, dumb. He couldn't. He, 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 couldn't help himself no he was a bragger and i and he would talk about and then the other mob guys would come out and like look he was not that big of a deal Mm -hmm. but he was a good talker and he was really good at talking to people and getting things for people and he didn't lose his temper he didn't he wasn't a a pushy person he just was unbelievably charming and so and had his addictions and then grew up poor and Mm -hmm. like saw this kind of lifestyle and thought it would be fun and he liked it but ruined himself and his family yeah you like him i mean he's not the nicest guy but he's an interesting guy i would go yeah. for drinks with him i would love to make <laughs> him laugh because he, ray leone had a great laugh he has such a good laugh especially in this movie like it's real good it's so and then he meets so they're they're all become friends and and he meets this is the best i and and, and to be in a martin scorsese movie as a woman, you have to have, you've got to really have a thick skin and yeah. just push your way in because there's so many guys. Yes. And that's, that you, of course you have Lorraine Bracco mm-hmm. and she's beautiful. Yes. And she's and so good. So good in this movie. She and Henry, they go on a couple of dates and then he blows her off. He's, yeah. And so she shows up where he is with his friends. And yeah. It's like, you stood me up. <laughs> like, yeah. Because that's never happened before. They're turned on by each other. Mm-hmm. They get married. It's at this place in Brooklyn. Uh, they have kids. And then you find out from him. And there is the whole tracking shot. And it's beautiful. Oh, a restaurant. It's... And you meet all the characters. So it's famous. Like... Such a famous scene. Yeah. And you could you could Google that shit. I mean, it's, it comes up everywhere. And then everybody tries to do it now. Like there's always yes. people trying to. And it's that was I remember. I don't know if you remember that, but seeing that movie theater was like, holy shit, that camera yeah. just keeps going. Yeah, because we especially like I said earlier, the move, the whole movie feels so much like a trailer, like a movie trailer mm-hmm. to me to have a shot where there isn't a lot of editing going on. It really there's like a couple of those in this movie. There's another one later where they're sitting in a diner having a conversation and it just like the perspective is adjusting. So it looks like Mm -hmm. it's like moving in on them or something. Um, But this shot just stands out because it's, it's, and it's really long. It's like a really long tracking shot of Karen and Henry and they're going into the Coca Cabana and they're going like downstairs through the kitchen, like through the employee area. And he, and he knows everybody. Right. So he, he looks so famous to her. To Karen. Yeah. Like, she's not used to this. She doesn't. She... He gets a front row table created for them. Yes. 
with champagne. She's wearing a gorgeous outfit yes. that he bought for her. Of course, she's, you know, wooing, yeah. you know, he's wooing her. Yeah. He's, he's showing what he can bring to the relationship. Yeah. I think it also, we should remember like, MTV changed movies like yes. movies did become like you were saying like shorter edits mm-hmm. quicker scenes so to see something like this that kind of lingers yeah is nice that's why you want to see a movie it yeah. does yeah and they get married and then she finds out that Italian men mobsters they have wives and they have girlfriend grumazes yes and they get to live a certain life you get to get a house in Long Island you know yes. and just Shut the fuck up. And Sorry. Their, but... Yeah, and have their kids and keep their home. And go shopping. Yeah. So what, but... they say what Friday nights are for the girlfriends and Saturday nights are for wives. <laughs> I would never. Oh. Yeah. I think it's some relationship that would work fine. I think for some people. But I think it's just like how you want to live and what your boundaries yeah. are. And, you know, I'm not going to judge. I mean, but Karen isn't into it. Let's just say that she yeah. wants him home. He takes off for weird hours. Mm-hmm. His temper comes out. I love it when he beats up her, the guy that <gasps> tries to molest her. I think I'm sorry. Turned on. OK, that's wrong. But yeah, she it's... says, I got to admit, it turned me on. And by the way, that beating, it's fucking brutal. Fucking brutal and that's like i said in the movie theater people were like really upset like it was like really intense but you feel safe around him like i'm like nothing no one's yeah. gonna fuck with me this guy is gonna take care of it yeah and well also like she so after the tracking shot like she asks him like what do you do and he says i'm in construction and it's like she you know at this point she knows you know but she kind yeah, of just she's not stupid yeah she kind of is like lying to herself and it's the lie that a lot of people tell themselves by the way when they like someone like you exactly just, you just you you cherry pick yes exactly what and they she, tell you and what you say yes and like they get married and like she's like at the wedding there was all these peters and pauls and marie's and like so right. which made me laugh i'd forgotten about that line and the huge long line of people like giving the money and she then like starts lying to herself about how much crime is being committed, you know, where she's just like, it's a little bit of crime. He's like, he's just, you know, just to get us some of the extras. Like she really likes the lifestyle. Absolutely. It's once again, like paving the way for what you'll see in the Sopranos a little bit later where like, uh, Carmela, like was in, like she would just pretend that he wasn't a mobster and, but and enjoyed she had fights the... with him. Yeah. <laughs> about dumb things. Sometimes I was like, do you not know who you're yelling at right now? Like which, she had a vision of her, of him in her head. Yes. And that's what she, and that's the same thing with Karen. Like Henry was a guy that worked in construction yes. and had kept weird hours, but he loves me and he's a good cook. And he, you know, he, yes. he take, he buys me things. She gets a house in the five towns. I don't know if you're familiar with that, but mm-hmm. that's a section of long Island. So I'm from the North shore, which is Glen Cove and all that. And this is the South part and it's called the five town. There's Hewlett and, uh, Lynn, you know, look it up yeah. anyway. It's a Jewish enclave and okay. it was a place you lived. People live very well. If you said I was from the five towns and that's where okay. she is. And so it's a big deal to have a house there. And she's living, it's things like checked off in my head. I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, okay. Mm-hmm. That may- So the girlfriend has a place in the city or in Brooklyn. Right. So he keeps his like, he tries to keep a Debbie Mazar. Yes, we love her. His- oh. She's another one. Every time she shows up, you're all, yes. This is going to be good. Yeah, she's he- going to be great. He sets his mistress up in an apartment nearby and- I mean, I will say tip of the hat to Karen to being like, fuck off. Like, yeah. you know, she she won't leave him because she won't. She she even says, like, I won't leave him because I'm so attracted to him, you know, but she, she loves him. Yeah. There's chemistry. And they he makes her feel good when he's nice. Yeah. And they have kids together. And so she yeah. just yeah, she shows up at the other woman's place and she's just pounding like all the apartment keys and calling her a whore, a whore. And two R. she's a whore I, let the loose the soup and i'm like i'm totally on board with that yeah yeah i also know you know henry's the one who made the vow not janice or whatever her name is but um right but also 
I get Fuck it. Janice. I get it. <laughs> as much as I love Debbie <laughs> Mazer, she knows what she's doing. Right. But she herself thinks I'm going to, he's going to leave her and he's going to yeah. pick me. Like right. she'll die someday or, or she'll divorce him or she'll whatever. So then I'll, I'll be, cause she's like his number one grumots. Like she doesn't understand. Mm-hmm. He probably has a two or three others. Yes. Depending on, you know, if he's in Atlantic city or whatever, this is like, it's different from the movie before this was the Godfather mm-hmm. that came out in 1972. I want to say. Which was more yeah. like they at the time, and there's a big series on Paramount about it now called The Offer. They could not use the word mafia or mob in the oh. movie because the actual mafia mob threatened to kill people. Oh my God. <laughs> and started scaring the shit out of the crew and people who worked for Gulf and Western, which was the company that owned Paramount. And so they had, they made it more, and it was anyway based on the book. It was much more of a family drama. Yeah. With some mob shit. But it was much more about the family and how they're dealing with each other. This is about the mob. I mean, there's family mm-hmm. stuff, but this is really about mob, about crime, about yes. corruption, about whether the cops know and they don't know. And they're basically they're doing these things like they're hijacking yes. cigarette trucks. They're tr- cigarette trucks, like trucks that look like cigarettes. No, but like they're <laughs> hijacking the cigarettes on it. Yes. And everybody and they show you everyone's in on it. Yeah. And my dad grew up in Far Rockaway and he, this was his whole life. Like he knew this. Yes. And he was, and I, I remember um, when I was a kid, there was this candy store in Glen Cove and they didn't sell any candy. It was just guys smoking oh my cigarettes. God, a total front. Yeah. And I didn't know what that was. My, yeah. And the thing was, all the kids were told, don't go in there. Mm-hmm. Like, you're all, but it's a candy, candy store. <laughs> but it's a candy. I'm like, what is going on? And I, we, we would dare each other to go into this thing. And you'd be like, do you have any wacky packs? And they're like, I got your wacky pack right here. Get, yeah, get out of here. here. <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea until Donnie Brasco. That's another movie maybe we'll talk about one day. Yeah. But, um, but it was a front. I mean, there's like, that's, but it's boring. It's tedious. You're constantly chasing money. You're constantly paying people off. Mm -hmm. You're constantly looking to get paid. I mean, for all the things that you want from you're like, I don't want a real job. I just want to do this. And then I can have all this time to enjoy myself and my money. And it's like, you're working harder than a person that works nine to five. Yes. And crazy hours. Yeah, they they show they kind of have a montage of them just like shaking people down for money. And it's just cut after cut after cut of them going, fuck you, pay me. Yeah. And it's everything from like, I'm sorry, Sonia. No, it's but it's everything like from cigarettes, like somebody else could sell that out of their car. But it's I didn't know this vending machines like that's a whole thing. Oh, yes. That people are in charge of. And then they could and they have their property. I mean, wherever you think you can get money and they try to find the least sexy thing. Because that's the thing the cops aren't going to notice. Right. I mean, and then you realize a lot of the cops are on the take. Mm-hmm. They turn a blind eye. What? Cops can be crooked? What? No. I, please. After this last week. Uh. Um, uh. <laughs> anyway. But they're constantly being the the only people that really take the take it seriously. Are, not the only people, but the FBI right. is in on. It takes it seriously. Anything you do that's you know, between different states, it becomes a federal case. Mm -hmm. And the feds have their, I mean, I'm sure there's crooked feds. Of course there has to be. But I think that I think for many of them to prove these guys, as you were saying, like Paulie, I think it's a Paulie. um, He, the first one we meet, like he is a phone is his home because Mm -hmm. all their phones are bugged. Yes. And they record everything. And so everything they, so on top of everything, even the most tedious interactions they have to make sure no one's recording Mm -hmm. them and so they have these like like i said boring hangouts and they just they talk outside they use pay phones they do this and it's all it's this very rough lifestyle that could be gone at any second and they're all just kind of addicted to it yeah it's what they know i'm like it seems easier to me to get a job at a starbucks but whatever man whatever floats your boat you you do you boo (laughs) Just don't hurt people. When yeah. you start hurting people is when I got a big problem with yeah. it. But it also, it, it, they they bust up unions. They mm-hmm. there's a there's a lot of stuff that happens. Yeah. I don't want the mob mad at me. By the way, yeah. I'm I'm yeah. <laughs> no, there's there's that like sometimes I think people think 
mob stuff is like victimless or something. And it's like, mm, right. That's a better no, way to put it. Not really. It's not like, it's one thing if we're talking about like a dude who borrows a bunch of money from a loan shark. I don't even know if that's a term. For that's gambling. Used. Yeah. You know, and then he, you know, gets the shit beat out of him or killed because he didn't pay it back. I mean, sure maybe you could say well that's what he gets or something but they're it's not victimless and they're going around they're shaking down businesses all over like we're not gonna we won't set your building on fire if you pay us you know it's like that's that is there's a victim there you know if you use this you can only get this vending machine no other vending machine company will Mm -hmm. go near your bar that sells the cigarettes but we get 80 percent right and it's like so i'm just it's this thing that just takes up space and really makes me no money yeah but i don't if i don't give this to you you'll beat the shit out of me you'll burn down my business my uncle had um a record label in the 70s and he was pretty successful he produced one of billy joel's albums Mm -hmm. turnstiles oh okay yeah it's a really good album and some some disco albums and he was doing really well but It was in Garden City, Long Island, Mm -hmm. and there's a lot of mob there. And they and the mob was in the music industry for sure. And there's a lot of great music you don't hear because there was the mob not signing people or not whatever. But anyway, the mob bought him out for nothing because they threatened my my cousin, his my uncle's daughter, my aunt and uncle's daughter, Terry. She was diabetic and she had. And when you had diabetes back in the day, it was insane to take a yeah. handle on it. Yeah, it it's, very, it's not very, like now. Like now, no, it's you have way, a pump way, now yeah. that you could put like directly into. There was nothing then, and so it, the 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 medicine was expensive. Everything was really, and they knew about this. And one of them had said it would be a shame if somebody switched your medicine yeah. at the pharmacy. That's and awful. that's why he was like, fuck this. Let's yeah, just sell it. It's not fucking worth it. It's not worth it. This movie does a really good job of showing what the day to day for yeah. a gangster is like. And there's this uh, they have some voiceover also from Karen from Lorraine Bracco's character. And she talks about how they all spend time together like that the idea of family is like all these mob people and their wives and their kids and they're all together and they only hang out with each other because they're the only ones they trust are each other. And then as, and she's like, and then it soon, all of it starts to become normal and you find yourself accepting more and more outrageous shit because like any abuse of a relationship. Yes, Yes. exactly. Any crazy family. Yeah. And Karen is 100% like an abused wife um, who, just can't bring herself to leave him and then the movie starts ratcheting it up so like the arguments become more frequent more people are getting killed mainly by tommy (laughs) who's like losing his shit on people and yeah he's the one that's in line to be a made man yes he could be but he fucks it up with his temper and he kiss he kills spoiler yeah spider michael imperioli Um, the Sopranos, yeah. Christopher, he had, Christopher, he has a part. I still call him Christopher. I did yeah. that in one of my posts, but he, yeah, he just smart mouths him and he just kills the kid. And yeah. they're like, now we got to kill. We got to find a place to put him. Yeah. Like people, you can't just kill a person. There's people attached yeah. to that person. And he's going to get upset. And he's just doing it. Like every yeah. time he gets pissed off, it's the, that's it. And he like, he fucking murders someone. So Tommy's undoing ultimately becomes that he murders this maid guy bats and they do it without permission. And there's, I mean, this is also a famous scene where they're driving around and like bats is in the trunk and they think he's dead (gasps) and he's not. And Uh. yeah, but they stop at Tommy's mom's house and she cooks for them. And that's Martin Scorsese's mom. Correct. Yes. And she's, fucking hilarious she's so funny and like there's just this whole thing where like she's cooked for them and they're eating and like tommy's just like hey i'm gonna borrow this knife like 
She's like, okay. Yeah, he's like, all right, we Why hit it. Why don't you find a nice girl? Yeah, he's like, I find I a don't nice need a girl. I need you. I just got you, ma. He said, I find a nice girl every night. <laughs> how much do you want her to cook for you? How how good do you think that food is? I bet I'm it's sure. so fucking good. <laughs> I'm sure it's that pasta. A big delish. bowl of that pasta and sauce and a glass of red wine. I would be so happy. Oh, I want to watch like I want to eat that with some peppers yeah. and and sausage, and then I want to just hang out on their couch and watch a ball game. Like so I just, good. I bet it would be perfect. She so I bet she, she would give you su- Tupperware full of you know. She totally leftovers. would. She would send you <laughs> off with leftovers. You one hundred percent. And I love her painting that she made. Oh. It's so, I actually I should buy a painting like that and just hang it up in the house. <laughs> See if anybody notices. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm into it. She's she's really great. Like that. It's such a good scene. He's yeah. This is mother. It's mom, yeah. I think it's mother and his father in that scene. And supposedly he didn't tell her what was going on in the movie. Like he he says they're just going to show up, and you're going to feed them, and that's all that is. So just improv. Yeah. So they just said make us some. She, she cooked them some food, and she just talked to them about everyday things because she didn't know somebody was in the trunk. <laughs> she did a really good job. Ah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So Tommy is now murdering murdering people left and right but somehow he does not end up in prison but they what happens does henry beat someone up henry no okay oh god damn it you're you're okay i'm a little confused no, no he well so tommy he's He's a, he's a hothead. I mean, he's, and they're all warning him. Like he's up to be a made man and a made man means you're not going to get whacked. Right. And it means you're in charge. You're, you have a lot of responsibility and you know, Tommy, he know, he's never going to get made. He's just, he's too, he's too crazy. Right. But so Joe Pesci, but he's killing people and he's become a liability. And there's only so much Jimmy can do. Like everyone loves Jimmy, but he's Irish. And so there's never going to have, he's never going to get any yeah. higher in the organization. Same with Henry. Yeah. Like they're kind of at the top of where they're going to be in the organization. And they're worried because it's just, especially when he killed spider, he killed somebody like, yes. you just never know who's related to that person. Right. And how that can look and, or it's going to get the cops sniffing around, you mm-hmm. know, because, eventually the cops are gonna have to do their job and like arrest people and and all that shit and tommy is a problem is that it's tommy right yeah okay sometimes i get confused when i'm talking um the the movies all meld in my brain yeah i get it watching so many lately i've been to this the place where tommy goes where he thinks he's going to get made oh that scene oh my god and he shows up and he just says, oh, no. Yeah. It's so I remember seeing that in the theater. I really didn't see it coming. I don't know if. Yeah. I don't know if it was obvious to other people. It was not obvious to me. And I remember being like, oh, shit. Like, yeah, I did not know. That was a shock to me. Because Pesci is like on fire in this movie. Yes. So you're like, well, they're not going to get rid of him. Right. We still have like an hour left or whatever it is left. Like, what, the, what it, that's right, Max. Max. Max, damn it, Max. Max, like, no. Max is all, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking dick. <laughs> damn it, Max. <laughs> but that sort of sets off. So Jimmy goes crazy. He's super upset because he brought him into it. He's not yeah. since he was a kid. Everyone's super upset. And then, but there's also, I'm sorry, but we also forgot to talk about, there's this big Luf- Lufthansa heist yes. at the airport. And it was a big deal. It's in the 70s, mid-70s. And I don't think anyone's ever been arrested for it. There's all kinds of documentaries about mm. it. The Great Lufthansa Heist, it's called. And the mob was in. I think some people, not everybody was arrested for it. So yeah. there's some people that, like, arranged it. But they it was this, this hijacking that happened. And the word was, we're going to make a shitload of money. Mm-hmm. And it was like, don't spend it. Just be cool. Yes. Pretend that money isn't there. Don't draw attention to us. Don't draw attention to us. Don't go on a crazy vacation. Don't buy a bunch of cars. 
nothing like be cool and right away they're buying furs for their <laughs> girlfriends and they're getting diamond watches and they're yes. getting like you know they're just flashy as shit they're getting you know cadillacs and mercedes benzes and they're going nuts and that's when the first time there's a big whackathon because they had to shut them up yeah and that's when we get uh is it give me no no it's that's it's, layla it's layla maybe we yeah. should, so we're gonna put because we eric clapton's an asshole yeah. so we're gonna put i'm gonna put unskinny bop maybe with, with that <laughs> unskinny <laughs> bop, 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 bop. Bop. it's just people showing up dead everywhere and it's intense it is like kids are finding the bodies like there's bodies and dumpsters Frozen. like yeah it's unbelievable so that's when you realize there's consequences like if yes. you fuck up it's not like you're just gonna get your jaw broken or something which is bad enough by the way but yes yeah you could die your wife could die right next to you like you, you you know and this so they all need to be on top of it and then joe pesci is going nuts anyway yes there's a big uh so he's whacked and then they're like henry and these all these men are in prison yeah, it's like Henry, Polly, some other dude. It's like Vinny or, you know, something like that. And But their prison, I was like, is this prison? Like, they're just cooking and, like, drinking booze. And and hanging out. It's yeah. a federal prison. Yeah. So they're, they're not, like, at Rikers. They're having, right. you know, like like Sonia said, like, they're bring, people bringing them wine and fine meats and that, stuff like that. So they cook these big meals. And they get out and they're on probation. They're supposed to be good. Mm-hmm. But they don't know anything else to do for a living. Yeah. And then Henry gets into drugs. Yes. And that's like his big, big downfall. Yes. He gets the girlfriend into it. They're selling cocaine. They're doing cocaine. They're mixing their own shit. Yeah. And selling it to people, which is really, really that's really going to get you into problems. And that's there's the scene and there's several songs mm-hmm. and it's to show just how jumbled up and crazy he is and his wife is addicted too by the yes. way like at some point she points a gun at him gonna blow his head off and you don't know like how much is real and how much is is it is imagination because he's coked up yes he uh he like he thinks there's helicopters following him so he and karen are like going all over town and then they're making meatballs and then they're leaving again <laughs> and then they're coming back and it's chaotic real, as fuck yes chaotic is the perfect word and that's the whole point of it. Like he's losing it. He's coked up. He's coked out of his mind. And then he, he does get pinched again. Mm-hmm. And this time they're saying, if you squeal, cause he's not a big dude in the organization. Yeah. Nobody knows who he is. He's not in the papers. He's not a flashy guest. Yes. Like he would get arrested and nobody would be like, who's Henry Hill. Yeah. They want a Gambino. They want a mm-hmm. something with an Italian last name. And that's what, people care about so they say to him we'll put you under witness protection but you have to name names and he does and he he names robert de niro he names everybody yes and then he has to get the hell out of dodge and that's when he goes into witness protection and then there's that famous last scene yes where he's like you know i order pasta with tomato sauce and they give me some noodles with ketchup and (laughs) i i feel your pain dude yeah He's like, and I have to wait around like everyone else. And he, Uh, schnook. I'm an average schnook. Great word. (laughs) That's such a good word. I'm gonna start using schnook. Schnook's a good word. It says it's not used nearly enough as it should be. Yeah. And then the last scene, you know, I go from rags to riches, (laughs) which always makes me think of Carmine Raguso from Laverne and Shirley because that's what he would sing all the time. Because I'm old. <laughs> You're hilarious. <laughs> and that's the movie. And it's it's a really good movie. And it, it's got like a title card that lets you know like that he was he was in witness protection and for years. And I, I guess he got arrested again at some point. And I don't know. He's he published a biography. Yeah, I'm like, he's not in it anymore, obviously. No, he calls Howard Stern constantly. And then he, unfortunately, he gets back into drinking and drug use right. and he's kicked out of witness protection. He divorces from his wife. Yes. And he dies yeah, from alcoholism. Yeah. And I want to say 2005 or so. Somewhere around there. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, 
it's you know people now think henry hill was a big deal like when you see a documentary about the mob and somebody mentions henry hill you're like oh yeah he wasn't that big of a deal right. but he but he was in he had, it yeah his whole adult life he had his he had his fingers and everything but he wasn't yes. like a top guy right it's it's such a good movie it's just it's uh... it's fucking good Duh, hot you're here for your hot take hot good takes. For, good fellas is really good you guys <laughs> <laughs> It was a big deal, though. It was a big Definitely. deal when it came out. It was, and, and like we, I said before, like some critics, some people yeah. get got very freaked out by the violence. I don't think anybody would be nowadays if this were. I think we're much more, yeah, used to it for sure. Yeah, with the rise in true crime documentaries and all the yep. fucked up photos we all see now, this is, this is nothing. This is nothing. Right. I read that um, Al Pacino was offered. Robert De Niro's role first and he turned it down and instead he did Dick Tracy and he regretted it and I'm like yeah no shit because well we he did talk about Dick Tracy a long time ago yes we did but and it's then not in the feed correct y'all don't need to hear it our take no. was it's not good no, it's not <laughs> memorable there's not much to talk about here and our other guest on that episode not good not so, we, <laughs> so um other people that were considered for the role it says tom cruise this is for Ugh. for ray liotta's role i should say um nicholas cage i'm like maybe he would have been good sean penn he would have been good yeah alec baldwin he would have been good they're yeah. all good actors yeah so i like them as people some yes some so, no. exactly and then the other one was john travolta yeah. I'm like, yeah, maybe. I'm like, sure. Is this your favorite Martin Scorsese movie? Oh, well, that's a good question. I do like Age of Innocence, believe it or not. That's another movie he's no, done. <laughs> that's a really good movie. <laughs> it's a really good movie. I And I actually enjoyed The Irishman. I know some people, I mean, it is long. Yeah. But it's on Netflix. You can watch it. Yeah. On your own time. I wasn't a big Gangs of New York person. I'm yeah. Yeah, I was the same on that one. It's not that I didn't like it, actually. I liked it. It's just, it's yeah. not when I, it, again, it's not something where I'm like going to go back and watch over and over. Did we do the one, oh, God damn, what's the name of it? 80s comedy, Griffin Dunn? Oh, um, After Hours. After Hours is really good. Yeah, we have not done After Hours. And then he did the documentary about the band, the last, yes. the, yeah. That was really good. Uh, damn, what was that one called? Burr, burr, burr. I can't find it. Anyway. But that's a really good one, too. Yeah. yeah, I guess it is my favorite. I mean, like I said, I, I've seen it so many times. Yeah. I mean, he, come on. He's Martin Scorsese. You could pick so many of these movies. Exactly. And, and say I it's your favorite. And I just like him, too. I, yeah. Like, I find, like, some directors are real egomaniacs, and some of them are just worker bees they're just people that know how to they have a vision and they can solve problems yes and i i love it when he's on tcm recommending yes movies. he's such a movie fan yes i and love it when like i love movies yeah. people who love movies and all all movies they're not yeah. such snobs like i only like things that are really obscure that no one heard of right i he likes popular movies he's he, i just i find him very likable yeah. and i think he's a good authority on movies and he and he cares about them and he loves new york and yes. he's like he's very he's very involved here in charities and on profits to help artists here in new york so yeah i i i'll take more of him unless oliver stones and quentin tarantino's and i like them fine yeah. but i don't ever want to fucking hear from them again uh Quentin Tarantino is another one, like a person who also super loves movies. And I don't think he's a snob about it because he likes some stuff that was definitely, I would say, quote unquote, lowbrow. Um, yes. But he can be a real prick about it. <laughs> he's he's it's it's that too cool for school. Yeah. Kind of thing. But I do. like. Oh, you like that one? Uh, didn't you know about the thing that came out two years before? And I was like, yeah, no, because no one saw it. Because it, you know, like, it's that thing. Oh, right. you like that band? Oh, Weezer? I liked them before. Oh, yes. I liked them before they were cool. Right. Sorry. That's yeah. my stuff. No, it's not your stuff. It's everybody's stuff. So this movie was nominated for six Oscars. 
Yes. Including Best Picture and Best Director. And it won for Best Supporting Actor for Joe Pesci. He uh, just said thank you and walked away. Yes, he, he, it's a he, short speech. He gave, it said, uh, it's my privilege, thank you. And left. <laughs> like, I'm like, they should all do that. I'm yeah. That. Uh, so I thought you might like to know some of the other movies that were nominated against Goodfellas. Please. So Best Picture was Goodfellas. Godfather Part 3. Not good. Ghost. Great movie. Awakenings. Not as great. It's, 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 it's a fucking bummer. It's a huge fucking bummer. Yes. That third act. I just, I remember yeah. my parents watching it with my parents and my dad being so upset. So sad. He's like, it's like Flowers of Algernon and I hate that shit. It's, so I remember that he said that. I, I will never watch Awakenings again. I saw yeah. it in the theater and I was like, Never again. <laughs> no, it's such a fucking bummer. They filmed that in this neighborhood too. Oh, my neighborhood. And then the best picture winner was Dances with Wolves, which we already yeah. talked about. And I'm like, yeah, okay. So Martin Scorsese was nominated for best director, and also nominated was, uh, I think I'm going to pronounce this right, Barbette Schroeder. Barbet Schroeder. Oh, I was so close for Reversal were- of Fortune. Good movie. I'm like, that's pretty good. Stephen Fears for The Grifters. The f- I think it's Freers. Freers. Sorry. Thank you. I like The Grifters. Yeah. I haven't seen it in a while, but it's a good movie. And then Francis Ford Coppola for Godfather Part 3. Mm. And mm. Kevin Costner won for Dances with Wolves. I think that's one of the ones that people go, he has an Oscar for that? You know, it's, but- it's so funny. Like, so back in the day... It was super common. If you won Best Picture, you won Best Director. They tend to keep those things Absolutely. together. They split that shit up all the time now. It's like really co- like I think now it would be like Scorsese would win Director and Dances with Wolves would win Best Picture or something like like it is yes. kind of it is kind of crazy that Costner beats Francis Ford Coppola and Martin Scorsese. <laughs> yeah, it's. <laughs> I think it's just because, and I don't. I'm not shitting on Dance with Wolves. I, yeah. I remember I used to really like that movie, yeah. and I and I I think it's watchable. There's a lot going on, and I think sometimes people give the director credit for every single thing that's mm-hmm. going on. And I think Dances with Wolves, excuse me, Dances with Wolves. I think it's the acting, mm-hmm. and not he, he's fine, but I think it's the other actors that are really good. I think it's the cinematography I and mean, whoever his yeah. director of photography was really should have won. Right. Because I don't think that's Kevin Costner going on a crane shot like, okay. <laughs> I just don't. I don't. I'm yeah. sorry. So Ray Liotta was not nominated, which bullshit. is bullshit. So we're, we don't even, and by the way, Jeremy Irons won that year for Reversal of Fortune. He and, was good in that movie. And he's good, but Ray Liotta's really, really no. good in Goodfellas. Yeah. Um, and De Niro was nominated for Best Actor, but for Awakenings. Yeah. Which, once bummer. again, fuck that movie. It's a bummer. And uh, Joe Pesci won for Best Supporting Actor. Um, I don't know. I'll have to go through all these. Um, and then Lorraine Bracco was nominated for Best Supporting Actress, along with Diane Ladd for Wild at Heart. Uh, oh, Mar- that's a Laura Dern yeah. movie, right? Yeah. yeah. It's a cute movie. Yeah. And Mary McDonald for Dance with Wolves. Yep. And Annette Benning for Grifters. She was fucking amazing. So in good in that movie. Holy shit. Yeah. And then uh Whoopi Goldberg won for Ghost. And she deserves it. That she's she is that movie. Yeah. And then As- let's see yeah. here. Oh, sorry. Uh best screenplay based on other stuff. Goodfellas was nominated. It lost for to Dances with Wolves. I'm like, uh, and then where was the other one? Let's look at because I bet like let's look at where cinematography. Keep going, keep going. Cinematography. Oh my god, Goodfellas wasn't even nominated for cinematography. What? Wow. So in cinematography, the winner was Dances with Wolves. That makes sense. Yeah. Uh, Avalon. I like that movie yeah, very much. It's a good movie, but really good movie. <laughs> Dick Tracy. <laughs> that but you know what the art direction of that movie is fantastic. The art direction though. Like Yeah, you're right. It actually it what oh, it won for art direction. So there you go. Mm. Uh Godfather Part Three mm-hmm. and then Henry and June. 
That's a dirty movie. That movie's naughty. <laughs> yeah, Henry Miller was dirty. Yeah. It was a dirty movie. And Goodfellas was also nominated for editing, which makes sense, but it yeah. lost to Dances with Wolves. Dances with Wolves just fucking took... I, that movie was a surprise for a lot of people. A lot of, but like, I think it was, yeah. hey, white people don't feel that bad about genocide. Yeah. <laughs> Some people were nice. Yeah. Well, I don't think we got a lot of movies from a Native American point of view. And this movie attempted to do that. But then again, through the eyes of a white man. Right. <laughs> It's the same thing what we talked about recently with the with Green Book, right? It's like we're going to talk about segregation in the South, but we're going to do it through the eyes of the white driver or what? It's like the racist white driver yes. who's like openly like vulgar and horrible. Yes, and I I don't need to see that. I grew up with that. I don't need to. Eh, By the way, I'm like I didn't even see that movie, but whatever. Who wants to? Yeah, but then the pe- there's like certain people like my parents who see it and really like it. And I was like, oh, maybe that's the target audience and that's fine. Is it the best picture that that year? No, no, <laughs> no not, not. Even close. <laughs> so that's our Oscar talk for today. Do you want to hear about the top songs? Yes, I do. So the date is September 22nd, 1990. That's when the movie, the weekend, the movie came out. Number 10, Poison, Unskinny Pop. <laughs> Unskinny pop, Skinny pop, 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 pop. MC Hammer, have you seen her? That album was huge. Tell me, have you seen her? Have you seen her? <laughs> Question mark. George Michael playing for time. I love George Michael. George Michael, that album, that Faith album was fucking amazing. So good. Okay, this is someone I've been listening to a lot of been dorking out about lately. Yes. Phil Collins, something happened on the way to heaven. <laughs> I saw him recently. He, I guess he's been touring with Genesis and he can't even play the drum. He's not even can play drums. That's something he hasn't been able to do for a while. Yeah. He can't even stand for very long. <gasps> he's in a chair. Oh my God. How old is Phil Collins? He's not that. Hey, Google, how old is Phil Collins? 71 years old. That's not old. How old? 71. You couldn't hear that? No, he's 71. That's not too old, but I, I think he's just got, he has a crazy ex-wife. He's got all kinds of shit yeah. going on for him. But I was like, I really like Phil Collins' music in the 80s and the 90s. Oh, I, my God. I did, too. I, I loved I've it. I've been listening to him, and so that, that song is one of my favorites, and it's 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 adult contemporary radio. For, for sure. sure. Yes. It's not edgy at all. Mm-hmm. It's not the Pixies for sure. But I don't care. I don't give a shit. <laughs> Look, not everything needs to be edgy and the Pixies. No! Some things can just be Phil Collins and that's okay. That's fine. Uh, Prince, Thieves in the Temple. I fucking love listening to Prince. Uh, Nelson, I can't live without <laughs> your love and affection. <laughs> oh, oh, if you don't remember Nelson watch their music video they had they were su- they had such beautiful, beautiful hair beautiful hair <laughs> great voices beautiful hair yes. uh the songs eh. um maxi priest close to you That's, you couldn't get away from that song i, I still love that song that's, a, that's good, a good song it's a good one uh number two you'll like this john bon jovi blaze of glory oh yeah i've been pushing hard for some young guns action on this podcast i'd be into that and Ugh, this this is I, I wasn't a big Wilson Phillips fan. Oh. Uh Release Me. That was a big song. I I did love Wilson Phillips. I, I yeah. I some things I'm like, I need to turn in my chick card because I no. just never No. That's not true. You can still you could still have your chick card and not like Wilson Phillips. I absolutely uh liked Wilson Phillips though. <laughs> my my first roommate when I first moved to New York, she worked for a TV magazine when they used to have those things, and she interviewed Carney Phillips. She was oh, on a talk okay. show, yeah, and she said she was like the sweetest, Aww. nicest, just the most like outgoing, fun person ever. Like she adored her. Oh, that's nice to hear. Yeah, all three of them have like beautiful voices and they do and they have the pedigree yeah yeah, they kind of i don't know if it was like their agents or whatever tried to turn them into like a sexy girl group kind of thing when really they're more of a they were vocalists they're more of a fleetwood mac vibe to me 
I think so too. And if they were like out like 10 years before or 10 years later, they yeah. might've had a different career. Yeah. But it was the MTV thing. Like, yes. and poor Carney Phillips talks about all the time. Like they were just constantly trying to put her on a diet and yes. And that had to be uh, Carney Wilson. Excuse me. It's China Phillips. Yes. She was like That's, the sexy. Yeah. They kind of were always putting her like in the front. And she's, She's yeah. on YouTube. She's married to Billy Baldwin. Yeah. And she's on YouTube a lot. And she she's actually, she's very sweet. I think she has some kind of like, um, like Kim Basinger. I think she's like some kind of an anxiety thing about. Aww. Yeah. But she seems like super nice. They she, all seem really nice. She went on. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, you might know this because I know you like to watch stuff like this. She was on Family Feud last year. Do you know this? Ugh. Um, I, it's some sort of charity thing, right? So she's on there right. and when she, before she start, gave her answer at one point, she did this like thing where she was clapping and she was going, Holy Spirit, activate, Holy Spirit, activate. What? <laughs> people were using it on YouTube all the time. So she was like a YouTube meme for a while. Oh, good for her. And then, and then she was like redoing them and like laughing with them and making videos with it it was really really funny like people were just taking her voice and running with it was it was pretty hilarious i think that's one of the best things about tiktok is it the people doing that with yes. like i do like that yeah. what's that called where they use they like anyway. stitch them together they yeah like stitch. i do like that yeah lizzo is very active on tiktok and all these people are doing a dance to a lizzo song and then lizzo is like commenting on their dances and it's it's very fun janet jackson likes tiktok too <sighs> do i not follow janet jackson on tiktok i better get you on need it to. i'm gonna fucking yeah. fix that shit right after we're done recording she is constantly like oh that's so great like because people are always doing because she's a fucking great dancer with yes great music yes oh janet love her Mm -hmm. What else are you dorking out about, Margo? In addition to Phil Collins, because <laughs> uh, I want to be ahead of the curve. Um, HBO, The Staircase, I'm still loving that. Yes, I'm they, all caught they up. They had the owl attack. I was shocked, but they had the owl attack. My friend Kim and I were texting back and forth last night. We're like, I still think he did it. Oh, I 100% still think he did it. I think you and I talked about this off mic. I said the episode they did on The Staircase. Oh, no, we did talk about it in one of our episodes because we did the who killed her. <laughs> um, I just I think that episode does the best job of making a case for the owl theory. But I still think he fucking did it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, hacks. Have you been watching? Hacks? Yes. So good. I fucking love hacks. It's so Jean smart. Good. Can we just have her in everything? She's and so Lori Metcalf. Can they just be in everything? Like, I just love them. Jean Smart is so fucking good on this yeah. show. It's stupid. It's stupid how good she is. Hulu finished Under the Banner of Heaven. Oh, I'm behind on that one. How is it? It's it's a bummer. Okay. It's a stone cold bummer. Um, I, I have like a lot of people think the Joseph Smith stuff, the origins of Mormonism... Yeah. It gets a little tiresome. It almost looks like drunk history to me. <laughs> I, I kind of want, you know, like a Patton Oswald, really drunk, kind mm -hmm. of narrating it. Um, but yeah, I think it made a good case for uh, fundamentalist Mormons and how they hmm. created this atmosphere yes. and the the patriarchy and all that shit. I liked it. Uh, it's a great book. Yeah, it's a really good book. Um, and then Wet Leg. I'm still really loving Wet Leg. <laughs> Their music is great. It's great for summer. Mm -hmm. And then I, my big, biggest point of pride is that I got you to watch <laughs> Below Deck Down Under <laughs> with your sister. So I don't know how many episodes are in a season. I think there's 14 right now. And we've watched five or six episodes. Okay. And we're we're in. We're in it. <laughs> like I'm gonna keep watching. I was like, thanks for the new addiction, Margot. Yeah. So I'll be I'll be watching that and I definitely have thoughts and feelings about that because there's just some people on here where I'm like, wow, that's really smart and these people are really thoughtful and they are really thinking. And then there's others where I'm like, Oh my god, you're such a fucking asshole. <laughs> and, and, and it's fun to and like fun. yell at the assholes. 
Yeah, and you're right. The captain is very, very handsome. He's sexy as shit. Yeah. He he, and all the women flirt with him, and they had a they had a, they had a trip where it was a bunch of strippers. Yeah, and, and sex worker like people were in uh, adult entertainment adult movie. Yeah, adult entertainment. That's the best way to yeah. put it. And one of the women really had the hots for him, mm-hmm. and she like visited him in his captain's lair. Yeah, and she was wearing like this gold bikini mm-hmm. and her little lucite heels. Got she was cute as a button. Yes, but he but wasn't it, wasn't interested. No, but he was very. He was very gracious about yeah. it, but he just like so we've talked about this before. Like competency is very sexy. Yes, it's com- <laughs> competency porn. It really is. Yeah, he keeps his temper. Yes. He listens to everybody. He's a good, you know, he's good at what he does. Yes. You feel like if anything happens, he could handle it. Yeah, and he's it. Also, I what I think I'm witnessing or what I'm being drawn to, not just by the fact that he's very very good looking, but mm-hmm. also like. He asks questions, he listens, and he thinks yes. about ways to improve his leadership for that person. Yes, which he's I very think, empathetic for yes. each person. Yes. And, you know, so he's talking to one of the one of the deckhands, and his name is Benny. And every time anyone talks to Benny, he mentions that his parents died the year before. Like, he mentions it immediately. And he's clearly, like, healing. And he's really, like, not in a good space. And, like... The captain is listening to him and trying to like help him and help him be like better at his job. And I just, I don't know like what's going to happen in later seasons, but in these like couple of episodes, I just, I was really impressed. I was like, that's, he's a good manager. He's a very good manager. Yeah. He listens to people really well and he gives them a chance. Yes. And it's, and just like I said, he can, he, did you see that where he like, he crashed a boat into a dock? Yes. That was so great. Yeah, but he's clear. He's clearly learned from his mistakes, and oh yeah, yeah. I mean, he had to do that basically. Like the the ship was gonna go, mm-hmm. um, and he just did it the safest way possible. But it took out a pier. <laughs> yeah, it's exciting stuff. But it, it's the travel. Like I want. I've never been to Australia. And now I really. I've always wanted to go, but yeah. I really, really want to go now. It looks beautiful. Ugh. I, yeah, it looks so. Beautiful. It's also travel porn. Yeah. It's so good. Not food porn. The the chef is terrible. Yeah, no. Speaking of travel and food porn, uh, Somebody Feed Phil is back on HBO with new, or not HBO, Netflix with new episodes. And this is like traveling. Have you ever watched Somebody Feed Phil? It's, no, but I like Phil. I've heard him interview yeah, before. He, he, he's like your dad. He's a dad. It's just dad jokes and like traveling and eating and He's a good, he's like a good American, you know, he's traveling, he's trying different things. He's very nice to people. He's like very open. He asks good questions. Like, I really like it. It is. Yeah. It's very enjoyable. Like, I wouldn't eat almost anything that he's eating, but (laughs) I like watching him do it. And he's so enthusiastic about it. That's the other thing. He's just like, always like, "Mm," like, it's so good. He like gets really, you know. (laughs) He's fun to watch. And I also watched all of Stranger Ooh. Things 4. What did you think? I liked it. I think the episodes should have been shorter. And instead of seven episodes, we could have had eight that were 45 minutes or something. Instead of seven that were like over an hour. They yeah. felt they felt long to me. Yeah. Same here. Yeah. I have the same criticism. And I do... By the way, I, I really like the show and I love that you can mix and match these characters and put them together in different ways. And it seems to always work. So you had like Robin and Nancy hanging out together a lot in this these episodes. And I really liked that dynamic. Um, I love Steve. I love the direction they've taken Steve, who started as like kind of the prick of season one and now is like one of my favorite characters on the He's show. He's a nice guy. Everyone likes him. Everyone can count on Steve. He has the great hair. Yes. Yeah. Like he's such a prick in the first season, you know, and now he's like, you really like Steve. Like everyone, everyone loves Steve. And there's just this whole thing with like, um, sorry, the David Harbour's character. Yeah. Damn it. What's his character's name? The sheriff. Uh, why is it totally blanking? Anyway, 
he's in like a Russian prison. And I was like, yeah, it's just I like, just... it's, it's too much. And it was too long. And it was like every episode, it's just him getting his ass kicked in a Russian prison. And I was Which like, is not fun. No, it's not fun. And it's like taking me out of the fun of the show. Yeah. That's all. And Winona Ryder's in the plane with the guy. Yeah. It's going to Russia. I don't know. Yeah, that the Russia stuff is not paying off for me. I like Jim the Hopper. Other stuff better. Jim Hopper. It's Hopper. Jim Hopper. Yes. Yeah, sorry. God, I'm so annoyed that I couldn't think of his name. Yeah. Like, I, that, I just feel like that stuff could have been tightened up or yeah i just felt like it was it's just too much i didn't want to watch seven episodes of hopper getting his ass kicked in russian prison like that's that's too long no i miss the heart i like i liked him in the first season and the second yeah. season i died but who knows i mean aren't they like isn't in uh, next month they're going to release the other yeah. episodes yeah yeah so we have like a couple more coming and i know that that that's because right now everyone's it's all separated like there's the people who are back in the town, there's the kids like that were in California that are now heading that way. So they've got everyone separated, you know, um, like L and Will and all of them are in California heading to the town. There's the kids that are in the town. And by the way, all that stuff is really good. Like all the stuff with Steve and Robin and Nancy and um dustin and um sadie sadie like yeah she she's really good by the she's way she's really good that's my daughter name by the way if i ever was I had a daughter i was gonna call her sadie i just love that name yeah there's and she i mean she's just a secret weapon this season she's so like the actress is so good and she's fantastic yeah but... and there's a whole thing with like kate kate bush's running up that hill that's like it's <gasps> so fucking good like, and that song's doing really well now. It's yeah. like number one on iTunes or something. Yeah. But then, it makes me think of uh, The Chocolate War when they used it in that movie. I have never seen The Chocolate War. <gasps> what? I haven't. Should I see it? I'll put it on my, should I put it on my list? Yeah, put it All on right. my list, dude. Yeah, it's it's a classic 80s movie. Okay. Yeah, it's that's, I mean, that song is awesome. And of course, there's people, right, on like social media who are like, oh, people are just now finding out about running up the hill from Stranger Things. It's like, who cares? Who cares yeah, how people alive find it? Then when it came out, yeah, asshole. yeah, exactly. And Ugh. now they get to enjoy it. Just let them enjoy it. God, people are such fucking buzzkills. They're such buzzkills. Like I just, I can't take that pretension. I hate it. I, I hate, hate that. I hate when people gatekeep things. It's like just let people yeah. fucking enjoy Kate Bush if they want. I almost said Kate Moss, by the way. <laughs> No. Enjoy Kate Moss or as jo- well. Enjoy she was a Kate, great model. Enjoy Kate Moss if you want, but I meant Kate Bush. Enjoy, enjoy it. Who cares how people find things? Ugh. I don't. I don't either. Enjoy. Yeah. yeah. And I don't care that you like something super obscure that never one's ever heard of and no one ever will. Right. Good for you. Shut the fuck up. You win. You don't get a trophy yeah. or anything, but whatever. No one wants to talk to you because <laughs> we, we don't have things in common, but enjoy that. <laughs> isolation <laughs> dumb fuck dickhead dickhead <laughs> Dicks. we're so salty we are salty yeah. today we're talking like good fellas yeah that's we right. are that's it fuck you <laughs> do i amuse you what the fuck am i a clown to you where can people find you on the internet margo I am at Brooklyn Fit Chick on Twitter and Instagram. I'm at Margot Donahue on the TikTok, and my site is brooklynfitchick.com. And if you like the sound of our voices, and I assume you do, we also co host a podcast called What a Creep, where we talk about creeps of the past and the present. And we end every episode with someone who's not a creep. Feel free to join us over on that one. It's real fun. The episode out right now is Ted Cruz. And yep. one of our listeners said, Ragey Sonia is her favorite Sonia. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking hate to cruise. Like most people. Uh, and we also talked about uh, the kids in the hall. Yes. Not creep. And yes. they're on Amazon, on Amazon Prime, the new season. So check them out. Yeah. That's also a good recommendation for people. Yeah. You can find me at the Sonia show.com and the Sonia show on Twitter and Instagram and TikTok. And if you would like some stickers, you can email us at dorkingoutshow at gmail, and we will send you some no matter where you are on the planet. Margo will send you stickers. I will. 
And uh, we also take requests. So if you want to tweet to us or email us or anything, put it on our Facebook. You could go to the What a Creep group and put it in there. Whatever you like. We love requests. We do. And you can find Dorking Out at DorkingOutShow.com on Twitter and Facebook. And sometimes even Instagram when I remember. This was super fun. I'm really glad that we got to talk about Ray Liotta and Goodfellas because it had been too long since I'd seen it. And also on Skinny Bob, we cannot forget. <laughs> Skinny Bob, 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 Bob.